Just a short note uh, to say that uh, on the way that this was shot, uh, sleeping bags are difficult to display in person. Uh, they're challenging to photograph in still photography. And uh, when you start using video and introduce uh, an individual, a person, into the frame, uh, things get real wonky and you really can't see much of any either the person or the sleeping bag. So I'm, I'm using some still photographs and doing some other things uh, in the future videos uh, to kind of improve the situation. Let me know what you think uh, in, the, uh, in the comments down below uh, if there's anything else, any other suggestions you may have. Thanks a bunch. Okay, uh, right now we're going to start our series on uh, early 20th century camping gear. And we're going to start with sleep systems, sleeping bags in particular. And I decided to attack it this way uh, when I came across an article in an 1896 issue of Field and Stream magazine. I'll show you the beginning of it here. And I will post the full article in uh, the file section of the Bannerman's Camp Facebook page if you want to read it. But in it, it talks about two things. Uh, first off, it's the first mention I've seen, or one of the earliest mentions I've seen of, of the term sleeping bag. It also mentions that uh, sleeping bags at that time, 1896, were expensive. And the way to get around that was to get a stockman's bed sheet and a couple pair of blankets. Now, the stockman's bed sheet is what we call today the cowboy bedroll. It's a tarpaulin about six to eight feet wide, about 12 to 15 feet long, and if you fold it in a prescribed manner as described in that article, uh, you get something that will protect you from the weather. And if you fold your insulation in a certain way, as described in that article, you get something that will keep you warm in the cold. Now, at the beginning of the uh, 20th century, as uh, camping became more of a recreational activity as opposed to something that you did as a consequence of your employment, uh, attempts were made to uh, improve the stockman's bedroll and make it a much more utilitarian design for that purpose. A uh, number of patents were issued. I'll show you two of them here. And as, as with the article, I'll post those in the file section of the Bannerman's Camp Facebook group. Another attempt was what we see here, uh, a sleeping bag made by the famous department stores in California. Here's a picture of it. Now, for those of you who are too young to have ever been to a department store, uh, department stores is what we did to go shopping before there was Amazon. Uh, Rather than order from a catalog, and most of these stores had catalogs anyway, there would be a building that would have uh, all of its goods uh, separated into departments, usually on separate floors. On the first floor, there may be uh, kitchen goods and, and bed clothes. On the second floor would be men's and women's clothing, etc. and so forth. This particular sleeping bag was... Uh, made by the famous department store and sold in their Army-Navy department. Okay, an Army-Navy store is a little bit different than Army surplus in that these are goods made in the Army style, but uh, aimed more towards a civilian market. 
the earliest advertisement I found for the Army Navy Department for the famous uh, department stores is 1921. Now the rest of this video is going to be showing this, this bag in detail uh, for uh, those who want to understand how it was used and who can see how it was used. And, and for anybody who is a living historian who wants to use this knowledge uh, to replicate one of their own, not necessarily make an exact reproduction because many of these things were made in ranch and farm shops. Now, we see a lot of stuff on TV about ranching and farming, uh, but they don't show the less glamorous part of it, which is the uh, repair shops that were used. Every ranch and every farm had the sewing equipment to repair and make canvas goods, because canvas was very, very common on farms and ranches. Wagon covers, feed bags, covers for bales of hay. The use of canvas was numerous and there would be a need to repair these goods. Also, you see a scenario where a guy has a wagon cover uh, that's got too many holes in it to make uh, to, to, for it to be useful as a wagon cover, but he might be able to cut it up and use it for another purpose. One of them would be a sleeping bag like this. Okay, the finished piece is 101 inches long. It has a top flap 30 inches long. The top edge of the envelope is folded over and hemmed about an inch and a half and it is folded under to provide a finished edge here. The top of the piece has another folded seam about an inch and a half folded under for the finished edge and then there is from here to the top of the envelope is another folded seam about three quarters of an inch on both sides giving a good deal of thickness through which to put a half inch grommet. There are four class hooks along the left hand side spaced at the first one is at one inch, nine inch, 18 and 26 inches and there are corresponding steel brings on the opposite side. We'll get around to showing that in a minute. Each of the class hooks are sewed into a canvas loop. It is about an inch and a half away from the finished edge. Here the loop itself is an inch folded over sewn to the bag in an X pattern. The side of the envelope is sewn to within 31 inches of the top providing the flap closure. We have the three quarter inch hem along the side. That flap extends about three inches from the end of the stitching here into the bag itself. You can see where it is stitched across here. If you see it's sewn in a square pattern right here which makes that flap part of the top flap when opened. Both sides of the bag are sewn with a flat felled seam. On the left hand side of the bag it is sewn up to within 31 inches of the top. On the other side it is sewn all the way to the top. The corners of the bag show that it is made out of a single piece 
fold it over. You have your flat felt seam on one side, flat felt seam on the other. Okay, now here is that same corner. I've been calling this a flat felt seam all day, but I'm not sure if it is. Uh, maybe if uh, somebody who knows a bit more about working with canvas than I do can chime in. This is, this is the same corner turned inside out. You can see there's a triangular flap here and the nature of the seam. There's a line of stitching here and a line of stitching here which is what uh, leads me to believe it's a flat felled seam. But uh, there may be another name for it or there may be another technique of which I am unaware. But you can see how this stitching here, the method of folding and stitching, gives about oh an inch and a half, two inches of depth to the bag. Stitching here. Remarkable except for the sewing of the steel rings with an X fashion located about the same as the clasp hooks on the opposite side and there is a maker's mark here that calls, says it's a sleeping bag three foot by six foot twelve ounce duck so that what we now know is the length of the material and the type of material used near the top of the bag we have the maker's mark it is made by the famous army and navy department store Long Beach, Glendale, and Los Angeles. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, if you're interested in uh, the history of, of camping gear, the 20th century, I hope this uh, interested you and gave you some information you didn't have. If you are a living historian engaging in classic camping, I hope this gave you some information that you can use in order to improve your impression. Other than that, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you down the trail.